name is Jim Sloan and I'm here with Pam Gordon of Technology Forecasters Incorporated, a consulting and uh, research firm, market research firm. Thanks so much for spending this time with us, Pam. My pleasure, Jim. We are really excited to be launching the Project Management Institute's Organizational Project Management Virtual Community of Practice. And this is going to be the first video interview that, that the, will be put on the site. Excellent. And I think it's great that we're, we're doing it on a, a very timely topic. Um, could you tell us a little bit about your background and Technology Forecasters? Sure, sure. I started Technology Forecasters, Inc. in 1987. And we focused in serving the high technology industry with operational manufacturing, strategy, supply chain, outsourcing, etc. And then about 10 years into the life of the firm, I started noticing a connection between high-tech companies that had formal resource conservation programs or environmental programs and a higher level of profitability. So several articles and a book later, I now have a thriving consulting practice helping tech companies to reduce their environmental footprint and to profit from doing so. Boy, that's fantastic. Uh, I was, well, I was wondering, um, well, how does Thinking Green advance an organization's business strategy? Companies today are looking under every rock to reduce costs, and sometimes they think they've gone as far as they can go. But when you use a green lens, in other words, when you look not only for cost savings, but also actions by the company that are going to reduce its impact on the environment, you will find more projects, more ideas, more cost savings, typically to the tune of millions of dollars per quarter. In fact, if a company is in the middle range of maybe $250 million in annual revenue, up to a billion dollars of annual revenue, you should expect to find at least three to eight million dollars of savings per year from a well-designed high ROI environmental program. Great, and what organizational strategic objectives or, or needs do you see in the next few years? Companies have to decide what they're committed to with environmental products and processes. Today, if you stand still, you fall behind. So one has to decide at a very high level, we think the CEO level, if the company is going to commit to just following regulations and not getting any business value from the green movement, or in beginning steps, let's say reducing energy and water use by 25%, that would be a beginning stage. Or maybe a leadership position of looking at some very innovative ways to reduce environmental impact and increase the bottom line. Or even that edgy, truly out there ways of looking at innovative ways to create product, to solve problems in industry and in society using as few resources as possible. Hmm. How do you make the connection between projects and the organizational strategy? Well, it's not enough just to have the vision of environmental initiatives. And it's not even enough to have the CEO approval. Now, both of these are essential. But you also have to make changes in the organization. So you need a good system of projects and project management to see through the changes. And in fact, there are a couple of ways that project management is even more challenging for environmental initiatives. One is that the teams are often cross-functional. You'll have people working on environmental initiatives together from marketing and R&D and operations and finance and IT and sales. So you need someone who can work across all functions and all regions because many of the best environmental programs use excellent ideas from each corner of the world where the company operates. Any thoughts on how we can make sure projects contribute the expected benefits to the organization? Yes, just because it's an environmental program 
There is nothing fuzzy about it. We use rigorous business and project management goals to set and achieve milestones toward our objectives. In fact, the way to have a successful environmental program really is to emphasize the financial benefit. The environmental benefit needs to be there. We need to have good science in there also so that we're not fooling anyone, especially ourselves. But the best way to get buy-in from the CEO and all levels of the organization is to codify very systemically and systematically the financial benefit. So what kinds of projects does your organization implement? Well, every time we take on a market research study or a consulting engagement, it's a project. We always start with a kickoff meeting with our team and our clients team. We establish primary and secondary roles on each side. We talk about not only the objectives of the project, but we always ask our client, what are the bigger organizational objectives? So that as we're going along, we can flex and find opportunities for our client that might be beyond the scope of the project. We also talk about risks up front. What will happen if we're not able to get the information we seek? Or what if there are roadblocks that no one can anticipate now? We look at that ahead of time, not to be negative, but because we want to have that discussion and think of ways to succeed early on. And of course, we always look at what decisions do we want the client to make at the end of the day and starting from there and working backwards to find out what insights, what information, what best practices do they need. And at the end, always an evaluation so that we can continue to hone our practice. Could you give us an example of one of your client's uh, projects that you helped with? Sure. Uh, there are several high-tech companies uh, in Europe, in the central part of the United States, here in the Silicon Valley area, where we have set out to reduce their carbon impact in the thousands of metric tons. And this has been through redesigning their products such that they use less energy, fewer materials, less to be shipped and stored. We help them move their products around the world in ways that are more efficient and less taxing on the environment. We help them with their own facilities to use less electricity, less water, less paper, less stuff that they don't really need. We help them with their employees' commutes to reduce them and corporate travel. And we even go beyond their four walls to their supply base. Because oftentimes, a company's suppliers can have 10 to 20 times the amount of carbon impact than the company that's directing those suppliers. Well, does a company that effects strategic change through projects have a competitive advantage over competition if they think green, and how do they do that? Absolutely. There are so many ways to differentiate oneself in the marketplace, and if anyone's listened to any requests, questionnaires that come in from corporate customers, you know that green is topping the list for requests for proposals. And in the consumer side, we all know that we're becoming more and more educated. So we as organizations need to educate ourselves ahead of our customers so that we know what's coming. We often put into four or five buckets all of the environmental requirements that might be put upon our products and our services so that we can prepare ahead of time. You see, because if you don't, then it's going to be a fire drill to catch up to every new requirement put on you, whether it's a government regulation, whether it's a new customer request. So we think about these strategic buckets of environmental categories and we're proactive so that we're always ahead of the game. Fantastic, Pam. Thanks so much for spending this time with us. Thank you, Jim. Pleasure.